Thank you so much for being here and um, thank you for listening. Thank you for opening your hearts and thank you for sharing um, today. Well, um, I would love to open the floor for any questions you may want to know about the film or the production. Just to give you a little background, this film was um, was made uh, with uh, with a funding from the Hong Kong government's first um, first feature film initiative. So our director, Miss Oliver Chan Shukun, submitted her own script and got the funding for this. And um, originally, we didn't when we were approached with this project. It was a passion project for us because they said it's a low budget film, and um, and all I remember thinking was. Well, if this is going to be going to schools and, and institutions where we could actually open cross-cultural communication, I said this is worth doing. Little did we know that um, when we premiered in October 2018 in the Hong Kong Asian Film Festival, um, a few months later, we were nominated for eight categories in the Hong Kong Film Awards, which is actually the, the Oscars of Hong Kong. And, um, and uh, we actually won three major categories for um, Anthony Wong for Best Actor, um, uh, Ms. Oliver Chan Chiu Kun for Best New Director, and, um, and I was nominated for both Best Actress and Best New Performer. And I'm happy to say that I am the first Filipina to win uh, an acting award in more than anything, for me, it was not just the uh, it was not about holding that award. It was being able to stand and stand in front of people and represent the Filipino voice because it's time that we took control of the narrative and we redirect this narrative into an empowering light for all the people that um, that are abroad and are also here. So, the film seven months ago and uh, it continues to to move me um, how how did what was it what was it like working with with Anthony Wong uh, he's um, a legendary uh, figure in, in Hong Kong cinema and he won uh, five Hong Kong film awards so far what, what was it like working with him and how did uh, Shukun um, establish rapport between the two of you? Thank you for your question, Rito. Um, yeah, I, uh, to be honest and embarrassingly, it's embarrassing to admit that I did not actually know of how famous he was <laughs> until, until um, on uh, the first day of set where people were actually following us around. And, uh, and this was, um, and this, and and his his reach and his um, his influence um, has just been um, affirmed when we went all the way to uh, Udine, the Far Eastern Film Festival in Udine, Italy, in in May, where people flocked, to, uh, Europeans flocked to see Mr. Anthony Wong. So he is a legend in in many respects, and I I think the best thing about working with people of his caliber. <coughs> And his professionalism is just that that they're just very very good <laughs> very very professional very um very wonderful to work with very patient on the set um with me at least and um, um and, and a very generous and giving person and i think with many professionals you can't expect anything less and i think that's a testament to the years um, that um, that he's given his heart to this industry, and, and I have nothing but um, great respect and admiration for his work, both um, his talent and his and his ethics. He took on this job, this role, not a job, because he wasn't paid for it. So he took it on, and I remember hearing him in one of the interviews where he said, "Because it's high time we we cast a Filipina in the lead too, because." Why do we have Hong Kong movies without Filipinos when in fact they're part of our society too? Oh, oh I was, um, I, I saw the notice on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, when, um, when Siu Kun was looking for, uh, for Evelyn, I think originally they went to the Philippines, but for some reason it didn't work out. 
Um, and and uh, Siu Kun said, you know what, why don't we find somebody from Hong Kong who would understand the context and maybe would also dream of doing something like this because the theme of the movie, part of the theme of the movie is about dreams. And, um, and so she made a casting call on Facebook and it was being shared around. And, and when, when first reached my inbox, I'm like, mm, it's probably not for me. It's a, I think it's a great concept, but maybe, I don't know, I've never done film. I've, I've been used to stage um, pretty much all my life. So I was a bit nervous. Um, but and some of you would know him. Um, my friend Zuri uh, um, sent me a message one day and said, I think this has your name on it. And it was like, maybe, it was just that moment I said, you know what, why not? Let me go and, let me go and give them a call. And I went there to the audition. And as soon as I met Siu Kun, I realized that this director was going to treat our story with respect, was going to show, our, uh, was going to let our voice be heard with dignity. And I said, I could not not be part of this, even if I weren't cast as an actress in the film, I would be part of it to, to share in, um, in reclaiming the story. Thank you. That's the, the audition process. Oh, the audition process. The audition process <coughs> was maybe one or two scenes, one or two scripts, um, parts of the script, uh, but a lot of it was discussion. And, and that's what I loved about Siukun we exchanged ideas and, um, and our knowledge on, on, on the issue. Um, when I first got to Hong Kong um, 12 years ago, uh, while I was working for Disney, I would spend my weekends doing community work with, um, with, our, migrant, uh, with our migrant workers and the organizations that support them. And so I had a lot of these stories. And in the audition, <coughs> basically after doing a few, a few scenes, Siukun and I just talked. We talked about the issue. We talked about what um, you know, how um, how I, I I understood these women and how what kind of a voice would we want to portray? Stories taken from actual stories. Uh -huh. People, you know. Good are, question. Yeah. Um, you know, the inspiration for um, according to um, director Siu Kun, and. Um, We've been on a lot of uh, a lot of international <laughs> tours together, so I can actually paraphrase what she said. Uh, one day, she said um, she was seated outside her home, and she saw um, a man in a wheelchair, and his caregiver who was standing on a platform behind that wheelchair. And she said, "Oh, you know what? That looks like it was specially made for this person, and their relationship must be unique." And then. She started wondering what are what's the mechan what are the mechanics of this relationship, and she caught herself, saying, "Why am I feeling uncomfortable if these two people develop a relationship that's very deep and strong?" And so that's what that's what started this um this whole project for her. <coughs> As to the characters, um, you know, when I received the script, a lot of it was already in place. Siukun did her research really well, um, and. Um, and for the characters and the scenes, we pretty much picked um, facets that, that people could relate with. Um, according to a lot of the, the women who work in domestic services in Hong Kong, when they saw the film, they said they could relate to different parts. They could see themselves in the different situations of the different characters. So it's loosely based on the collection. It's an amalgamation of all their, of all their stories. Griselda, how is it possible for us to have your movie shown in <laughs> school? Oh, um, uh, I, I think, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your interest. I, um, uh, I believe um, uh, Golden Scene, the distributors, are trying to find, um, find solutions, find ways to bring it to the Philippines. Um, so far, sadly, um, no, actually, okay, in a good and a bad way. Um, we have been everywhere around the world. I have done this tour in Italy, in, um, in, in Chicago, in San Francisco, in New York, in Washington, D.C. for the Smithsonian. Um, we've, we've been to um, Korea, we've been to Japan. Uh, we've been, uh, we're, we have had a mainstream um, showing in, um, in, in Malaysia and in Taiwan. 
and in many other cities. And, and um, last night at Cinemalaya was the first time we brought um, Still Human back home to the Philippines. This is only the second time this is being shown in the Philippines. Uh, yes. Um, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know why. But I'm hoping, also with your support, perhaps after today, if you if you feel strongly about the film, please do please do talk about it. That I think that will make it um, that will make it easier for us to reach reach the Philippine um, the Philippine audience. Talk about dreams. Mm -hmm. How has this film changed or developed your dream? Oh my gosh, this is, like, this is like a beauty queen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 World peace. I knew I'd have uh, up close and personal questions here in Manila. Um, hmm. It's making me revisit dreams that I thought I had left behind. So yes, uh, when, I, when I left um, the Philippines, uh, in 2008, um, I had tried to pursue other things, and and I'm very happy to um, to now be able to do community work in Hong Kong and, edu and work in education. I run um, I run um, schools for creative arts for children, and um, and my whole um, advocacy is to be able to put arts in education so that children and young people and their families will be able to. Um, Connect with um, with their means of expression, with their um, with their critical thinking skills, with their ability to empathize, which I have um, gladly learned from the theater and my experiences because I was uh, I'm the product of um, of an environment that allowed a child to grow up in the arts. So the sisters of Saint Paul are here today. Um, uh, I remember um, multiple times when I had to miss classes. I started uh, professional theater at the age of 10, and, um, and I would miss classes, or I would end up sleeping in, the, in class. And, and as long as I had good grades at the end of the term, they were very, very supportive. Every single show, they've been there. And look, it's been decades, and they're still here. Also, um, uh, Sir Pagsi, Mr. Onofre Pagsenhan. Um, I, he's been a wonderful mentor, not just to me, but to all the to all the many generations of of um, of young people whose minds and hearts have been inspired by him through Dula Ang Sibol in in Ateneo. And I remember, I remember Sir Pagsi, you told me that um, uh, that um, um, this is this is but a means to an end. And I realized then that. Um, the theater is not just about being on the spotlight and saying, bravo, thank you, here I am. It's about making sure that it's a platform for other people to be heard. Because if you have found your voice and you have, had a, you, you have a chance to speak it out, we need to find a chance for other people to be able to speak theirs. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful lesson that I've learned um, through, from my education and my environment in, in, uh, in the Philippines. I have a lot of friends here from various um, parts of my life, from, from rap, uh, from, from theater, and, um, and I think um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to pass it on. But at the same time, and no, it's not a bad, and at the same time, now that I think um, I've been at the phase where I'm able to share that love for, for the arts, I'm thinking now is a good time to see how can I reach a bigger platform and this might be a good chance. The climate of Hong Kong today is very, very charged. No? Um, if you were to, if you have the stage to say anything to the Hong Kongers <laughs> and to the Filipino community in Hong Kong, what would it, I, what, 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 if you wanted to, to, to speak for them or tell them something, what would it be? I think right now we are in a very politically charged situation and it's a very volatile state, state of being, state of, um, of things and, and it's very painful for us to see it happening. And um, right now at this point in time, I would refrain from, from speaking about the issue because anything right now, it, it is so volatile that it could hurt a lot of people. And so um, while I'm speaking on behalf of, of Still Human, 
I, I will refrain from um, from sharing my personal political political beliefs, although in due time, I do believe that there is a time and place for this to be shared. Making a grown man cry like three times in this movie. <laughs> um, I do believe that this has to be shown in the Philippines more. But um, what are like the steps that um, the production or maybe you have been doing in order to make this possible? Because the film is not just good, it's great. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Um, you mean what steps have we been taking yeah. to, to bring it here? Yeah, commercial. Um, on uh, a commercial release. On a commercial. Um, that's something that Golden Scene, the distributors, have been trying to do for months. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I do not know um, uh, how, it is, how, how it has not yet been taken or um, how, it, how no one has actually said, yes, let me grab that opportunity to, to show it in the Philippines. I do not know what's happening um, behind the scenes, but I do know that um, it's been quickly taken up by different countries. I'm hoping that the Philippines follows suit. I think, um, in a way, um, this, this private screening that I put together is my way also of reaching out to people and saying it's something of value and I believe in it. Um, I'm hoping that we would have a bit more opportunities after this. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.